play Whom Do I Fear, Chris Tomlin. Hello, everybody. It's Friday. Friday on the Angel Hour, and we got some background noises coming in. I don't know exactly what that might be. That might be Stormy on her phone. And for the sake of loving her, I will not share her on video because <laughs> she would flip. This is my painting I'm working on. So that's some of what I've been doing with my day. Hello, everybody. God bless. It's sunshine. How are you? It's the angel hour. It was the most beautiful day today. Miss Donna, I can't believe you're on. Good for you. Good job, Miss Donna. Hi, Morgan. Stormy, no one can see you. You can sit over there and listen. All right, it's not any cooler out there. We don't have this. We do not have the air conditioner in the studio yet. Because we did not know it was going to be this hot and it has been cold so I've been using a heater and now I'm from using a heater to an air conditioner in about four days. So, hello Miss Amy, hello Melissa, how are you guys? Happy Friday, today's fun Friday. I'm so excited. Okay you guys, we need to share this video right now. Let's go ahead and share this video for free readings, also prayer, and if you know somebody that's going to be getting a reading tonight, I think I might have told a few people I'd be doing a couple of words of wisdom from the Holy Spirit tonight. I'm going to put my actual Google on. Hey Google, play Celtic Chant Choir. I love this beautiful choir and this beautiful song. It sounds so heavenly to me. If my Google will listen to me, that would be great. <laughs> Gregorian 432 hertz of Gregorian chanting. That's not what I was looking for, but I do love that. Mr. Sunshine is off camera eating pizza, which I don't eat. Hey Google, play Celtic chant choir. So today I'm really excited. I had the most funnest. Here we go. Let's go ahead and go to the bottom and invite everybody to this beautiful broadcast so those people that need to receive messages and prayer can be here to receive those messages and prayer tonight it is a friday so a lot of people are going to get a break and they're not going to have to go to work tomorrow as essential workers and some will not get a break but a lot will so we're so looking forward to this awesome weekend of warm weather in sunny southern california i couldn't be happier I don't even feel like I'm trapped. All right, am I frozen? Can you guys see me? Let's see if I'm frozen, I'm gonna restart my video. I'm doing my invites. Make sure you invite family and friends. You never know who's gonna be the one to get that live reading. All right, we're almost there. Hello, hello, am I still frozen? Let's see, hi Miss Bree. Someone's pushing a motorcycle past the door. <laughs> yes, you made it Miss Crystal. Hello Miss Amy. I got to see you twice today. Hello Miss Amy. Good, share with private invites. So I wanna get up to at least 20 before we start this awesome broadcast so i'm going to talk about what a fun friday i've had today it was the first day we got to play in the water sprinkler it was the first day we got to have popsicles outside in the sun to me that is like a personal heaven hi miss lynette okay so i was freezing on video not frozen good i'm so glad hello miss charlene hi brie hi dominique Hello, Susie. My live video froze up and deleted, she said. Well, I sure hope not. Hi, I love Florida, and I love Port St. Lucie. I'm so glad that you're joining us. I know you guys are going through some seriously stormy weather, so I want to bless you. Mr. Sunshine, you got to mute your phone. I'm working on it. <laughs> <He's> just... <laughs> Mr. Sunshine is over there on his telephone in the background, so... 
I have some spirit messages. I can already feel them because my fan is not on me. It needs to be on me. Can you adjust that so it'll stay on me? Because I'm really hot. <laughs> I got one fan blowing overhead and this one over here. And we got to turn the lights down a little bit too. So when I do readings and the light is really, really bright. Hi, Miss Debbie. Hi, Lena. Hi, Miss... Oh, Tammy, I'm so glad you're here tonight. God bless you. God bless you guys. I'm so glad you're here. We are doing some amazing things on this planet. We're vibrating at the highest frequency ever recorded in history, ever, since they started recording the Schumann frequency of the earth and the hertz that it vibrates at. We are registering the highest that has been. I'm so excited for that. Because that means that even in these times of trouble and trauma and stress, the earth itself is healing and vibrating at the highest energetic that it ever has. And that wave that our earth is at actually corresponds with the frequencies that our brains are also at. So when it vibrates and lifts our, the vibration, the hertz, it does the same for us. So it's quite amazing to be seeing this. And, you know, even though it can get kind of hippie-ish, when you start talking about Mother Earth and geomagnetic fields, there's actually quite a scientific science to it. The same as healing music. If you ever go on YouTube, hi, Miss Angela, hi, Gail. You know what, Gail? Your name is so close to my husband's name, and I really like that. Hi, Crystals. Were you playing in the backyard? I know. Is this not the funnest day? Today is Fun Friday. We are in week, whatever, 1,000 of the shutdown at this point, and uh, we're doing good. If you guys know, I did a, um, <laughs> I did a anxiety and panic workshop this morning, and does anybody remember what the actual uh, theme song for the panic and anxiety workshop is? <laughs> Hi Zay, I'm so glad you're from the Philippines. I have friends all over the world and I've been blessed this week to do readings in Spain, Mexico, Oklahoma, Connecticut, Louisiana, and California. Who else? They're locking up. They're locking up? What do you mean? I'm locking up? Am I locked up right now? Maritza, hello, hello. Hi, Miss Angela, hello, Annette. You sold your house? I'm so glad, Crystal, I knew that would happen. No, if you haven't been feeling well this week, that's a really end of the world, yeah. <laughs> Brie knows that I play, it's the end of the world as we know it, and I feel fine. That is just the song. That is the funniest, cutest song. And it says, it's time I had some time alone. I think we got that. We all got some time alone. We could all use it. My girlfriend says to me, what are you thinking about? What are you manifesting? And I'm like, a day at the spa. <laughs> when all this is said and done. A day with the girlfriends. That's what I'm manifesting. All right, you guys. I'm so happy today. I can't control it. We need to do some prayers, though, so I want everybody. Hello, Miss Amy. I'm so glad you're here. Stephanie, Melissa. <laughs> oh, our birthdays are a part. You're the fourth. I'm the fifth. Oh, not locked up. Miss Be The Wife. Yeah, if, you have a, if you're locking up or can't hear me, it's probably your Wi-Fi connection, actually, because mine's actually pretty good. You need to find your homestead, then we need to start manifesting that. Miss Eileen. Eileen, we did the most amazing, beautiful reading. I got to do a reading for Miss Eileen today, and I did a couple readings today, and they were all like really amazing. And I got to share one. I'm trying to think now. I do so many, it's hard, and I forget them the minute after I do them, so it's hard for me to keep up. Who did I do a reading with today? Let's see. I had a consult with Miss Ginger, I had one with Miss Eileen, and I had another one with Miss. Now I can't check my calendar. I have to I have to check. <laughs> I'm not sure. Spirit. Well, yes, I had an appointment with Spirit. That's true. Okay, who was it? I know Mr. Brian. Who did you belong to? Miss Pat. Miss Pat is not here. I wish she was. I got to do Hello Miss Sharon. We did a reading too. 
Oh, Miss Bree. Okay, so I'm gonna discuss this, Miss Bree. Is it okay if I if I share some of the details of your reading? If you guys know someone that needs a, a free a bit of spirit, uh, just a touch from God and and you know some blessed assurance that they're not alone and that we're gonna get through this. Please share this message right now. It's much better than sending it later and being like, I got this reading. Okay. <sighs> All right, give me just a minute because I'm going to be looking at and figuring out exactly what I am gonna be doing today. Hey Google, turn off. Miss Bree had an amazing reading and I'd like to share some of her reading with you. <laughs> If you had a message for me, I'd like to know. I'm not feeling her message right this second, but it could come through. I just have other people that are pushing through first. It's really important. It's really difficult for me. I don't get to choose. I don't get to choose really who comes through or how. So we're going to say a prayer before we get started to protect my energy. I'm going to say a prayer with you guys, and we're going to be using the guardian angel candle. Hello, Miss Renee. I'm so glad you're here. God bless you from Chico. Um, I'm shooting blanks. Can you help me with the lighter that's in the drawer so we can light this candle? We have to have technical help because we have technical difficulties. I was hoping that Christina would be on here. Oh, it is really pretty. Hello, Mr. Terry. So I believe Terry, that's the one I gave a reading to also, and he is a Marine, and that was actually quite intimidated to do that reading, and it went really, really well. So hi, Leticia. I wanted to give a message to, hi, Fong. I wanted to, I'm going back right now. Oh, you already lit the candle. Well, goodness, okay. We usually do that on camera, but we're going to let that be lit. Let's say a prayer. Okay, ready? We're gonna say this prayer right now. We're gonna ask for healing and hope for those that are in grief and suffering. And we're also going to be asking for healing for ourselves and our planet and for those that are sick and suffering. Father God, we ask thee now in the name of thy son, Jesus Christ, to please bless this broadcast to all the ears that hear it. Lord, help us to ascend into the highest vibration and be able to connect to your angels. We ask that you would bless those that are sick and suffering and those with financial burdens and that you will comfort them and send the Holy Spirit to be their comforter. I ask that you protect my energy. Lord, and if will be, please give me any messages for the highest and best good. In Jesus' name, amen. I'm so grateful to get that moment to pray with you guys. It's such a blessing to accept this calling and to be able to deliver these messages. Now, I know there's lots of people that want to receive messages, and sometimes I can do that individually, and I do also do them for free. I don't always charge. If something comes to me, I will contact you. But during the live reading, I will do my best to give you the messages. But it's, it's not like, how do I explain this? I don't choose who comes through. <laughs> well, you don't have a, yeah, you There's can't. no filter. I don't get to choose. You can't choose. Like people are texting me right now. When are you doing the angel hour? I'm doing it right now. Right now. <laughs> okay. So let me get back. Here we are. So Miss Bree talks about her baby that came through. That was quite an amazing reading. Miss Bree had a baby that she lost at three. No, no. Um, I'm trying to think now. I had one that actually, no, yeah, that's correct. And Miss Bree lost her baby at three months pregnancy, and it was a little girl, and she'd always felt that it was a little girl, but she really wasn't sure um, much about her daughter, but she has two sons that are living, and her baby daughter came through, and let me just put this, come on the live, quit texting. <laughs> Okay, so her daughter came through in the reading and it was really beautiful for her to know that not only does her baby stay with her and that actually 
That child was one that she had never talked about. She had it very, very young. Can everybody hear me? Because I'm getting messages from people that say they cannot hear me. Can you hear me? Okay, where am I at? I'm not at the bottom now. Hello, Mr. Brian. Hello, Amy. Hello, Dominique. Yes, yes, yes. Okay, good. So Miss Bree had a baby that came through and I am going to say that that was the product of a very young mother with some very bad advice and uh, I think a lot of us have been in that situation and there's a lot of regret behind it. And I told her to please, her daughter came through and said her name. She actually said her name to me right as, oh, wrong notebook. She actually came through and she told me her name and here we go. She said Brianna, that is her name. And she told her mother to please forget the guilt and shame that she's carried and that it's time for her to heal and time for her to celebrate. And she even told me how old she would be this year. She was going to turn 13 years old this year. But you know, there is no, there's nothing but love and there's nothing but acceptance and gratitude. And she said, I promise I will come to you as your granddaughter. So she already knows very much that this beautiful child that's around her with her grandmother is going to come back to her as a grandchild. Now, it's not so much that souls reincarnate as it is that when a child, I've talked about this, but I'd, I'd like to continue sharing this. When a mother at any age has an abortion or a miscarriage, they're handled quite differently in the karmic level. So the karma of one is multiplied and the karma of the other is also multiplied in a separate way. I'm so glad, Crystal. I want you to hear this love. This message is from Miss Brianna. And I also did a reading for a mother that is named Tanya and she was in Mexico and I did it the same day. So this was only maybe two or three days ago, two days ago. And... Um, Miss, Miss Tanya lost her baby at one month old and her daughter's name was Savannah and Savannah was able to come through and tell me that she had a doctor's appointment three days before her passing and she received a injection there and I'm not against, I'm not an anti-vaxxer, I'm not against injections, my children have been immunized, however, the child was like a month old and something about that specific injection that caused her body to have a little bit of an immune reaction and she just, just wasn't feeling like herself and I told her mother this and this had been 13 years ago but her daughter's spirit came through so strong she actually told me that that she had had a small seizure and her jaw locked up and she had just her tongue just came back in her throat and she just didn't breathe and she passed in her sleep and she even told me the time. I said, you gave her a bottle around 11 o'clock and she passed between 12 and one. And when you came in at four, she'd already been passed for a few hours. Her mother was so overwhelmed with grief, but overwhelmed with love to know that her daughter is still alive and that God does not promise anything that he does not intend to keep and that there is nothing lost. Please, if you hear nothing that I say, please know, I want you to share this message. Someone has lost a child, a baby. Someone has lost a child in a way that this is really about that. So many people are losing, have lost children and they're here tonight and I feel it on my heart to give these extremely strong messages. They're so, so, so important. Please listen to me. If you have a daughter, a granddaughter, if you've even had an abortion, if you've had a miscarriage, if you've had a stillborn, if you've had sudden infant crib death syndrome, I have done literally six readings this week and these have all been babies and children and young children beyond the age, before the age of accountability which would be under eight years old that have passed and the suffering, the guilt and, and the heartache is so intense for these mothers and I want to tell you, I want to tell you that this lady, um, one of the mothers that lost her one month old of course this was an ex, a previous, and I said, your daughter's always around you, and she has another baby. She has another daughter now, and the daughter is like five. And I said to her, your daughter actually talks to 
your other daughter on the other side and she said oh, yes and i said your other daughter appears about three years old i even wrote it down three years old and she said oh my god she talks to her friend and she always says that she's three years old and it's quite crazy um that she says yeah she's three years old and she talked about her sister's birthday party and how there it is how her how her sister had a birthday party with unicorns and she described the cake in perfect unicorns with pastel mane and she said, I sit and watch Frozen with my little sister. And I said, when your daughter was a baby, when your daughter was a baby, this is Miss Tanya now, okay? This is not Miss Bree. Well, Miss Tanya said, I said, when, you, when you're sitting there watching the baby monitor, you would see flickers on the monitor, like strange little light orbs. Yes, yes. Strange light orbs and flickers. I got the chills. I am literally growing hair on my legs right now. <laughs> I know that's not attractive to state that, but it's so true. Um, she couldn't believe it. And she said, yes, I've seen those flickers on the screen. My daughter does have a friend she talks to. That was her birthday party. It just happened. Her daughter's birthday now is, uh, November 11th, I think it was. And her other daughter was born October 19th or something. So they're very close together, like less than a month. So she likes to celebrate her birthday with her sister. So she's very connected on the other side. And then Ms. Bree, when her daughter came through, she said, you know what? You've seen me on the monitor. I used to visit my little brother, which is actually her older son now. I used to visit my brother. So she came on the monitor, and there was things that she described that only I would have known. In fact, how she was treated at the hospital, how she was treated. Uh, Miss, Miss Tanya was treated very, very badly by, by her mother-in-law at, at the time her daughter died. They just said, get over it. Get over it, get over it. Let me tell you what. If I can tell you anything... Please do not ever listen to my words. I don't talk like this. Please do not ever, ever in a million years tell any mother to ever get over the loss of a child from the moment of conception. The moment of conception. Do not ever downplay that pregnancy or that child's life or that human soul because I promise you there is a human soul in that body from the moment of conception and I did not know or believe that I was taught it was a blob of tissue I'm not uh, this isn't political if you saw and talked to the spirits I've seen and talked to through the holy power of God's angels he knows and he tells me every day that spirit was a person from the moment they were conceived and their angels were assigned to them from the moment they come into the womb. So, however, abortion is not an unforgivable sin. And there is much love and forgiveness for the misinformation we receive in the world and the terrible advice. And usually the only free place to have a baby is an abortion clinic. So, just forgive yourself. That's what she wants you to know, to forgive yourself. Ms. Crystal, you said your baby son passed. It feels like there was a cord or something with the neck and the breathing. You have two other sons. You had three children, correct? It's either three or four. So you either have three living and one past or two living and one past. But I see almost like two boys and possibly a girl. So that was definitely a boy. Miss Crystal, are you there, honey? Oh, you saw her on the baby monitor after your reading, Miss Bree. That's what you're telling me, that she came to see the boys, or you saw her back when you had your baby monitor. Hello, Miss Iris. Hi, Aidy. Hi, Astis. Miss Bridget, it's the same soul, honey. It's the same soul. And they're showing me, okay, let me get to a page I can scribble on. This is, none of this is it. Okay, reading after reading after reading after reading. There we go, scratch paper. All right, what was I talking about? Miss Bridget. You have, um, it's like your, you know, your uterus is like tilted, not to be, you know, not to be too graphic, but they're showing me like, it, have they told you that your uterus is tilted, Miss Bridget? 
Um, cause there's definitely something going on when it gets to a certain point and it could be also, I mean, it's definitely biological. It's, it's, anat it's anatomical. It's, it's not hormonal. It's something in your anatomy that can be, uh, Miss, oh, I need to scroll down. I'm sorry. I'm not even looking. I need to. Yes. Okay. So that's why I'm getting the four and one. Yeah, Miss Sandra, you know what? That's why I want to address this right now. If you've ever lost a child, it doesn't matter at what stage that you've lost that child. Telling someone to get over it is is like hot coals. It, it's like shoving glass uh, on and somebody and, and telling them to drink it. It's the worst thing you can do. And the sad part is in all of these readings where people have lost a child, where mothers, mothers have lost a child from conception, they have all been told this from the ones that passed at the hot, you know, passed their, uh, had their miscarriage at the hospital, to their bedroom, to their bathroom, wherever they had it. There was a, a complete lack of respect for the uh, emotions of the mother, especially if the mother was really young, say 16, 17, 18. They say, oh, get over it. You didn't need a baby anyway. Um, that would, it, would have, it would have had issues. It's for the best. Um, you know, it's, it's really playing God. At that point, all you need is someone to try to understand your feelings. And I do want you to know that that is not the way to handle that. Yes, Miss Sunny, when I had a reading with you, you mentioned my miscarried baby was a boy. I was telling my husband, and he straight up ignored me and didn't respond. You know, uh, Miss Sunny, I'm going to tell you, though, that's, that's his personality. I, I hate to say it, and I'm saying it live. I'm not going to make any friends, but that is part of his personality traits. I think we discussed a little bit of that. But, uh, you know, I'm going to tell you the truth. Most babies don't circulate around the father. They stay with the mother, honestly, because... Men don't necessarily get the benefit of bonding during pregnancy. They really have it afterward when they get to hold and cradle and take care of. So it's not so much that they're totally insensitive. They're just not going through that aspect of it. But yes, if you have a miscarriage or an abortion, they do show up in your, in your chart. So anybody that's done a reading with me will know that there is, I will always give you the number of children you have had, which means miscarriages... Uh, uh, you know what however it is however that soul uh, crosses over uh, Miss Crystal okay give me just a second guys I'll be right back Oof. okay so there we go sorry about that yeah, because it felt, you know, Miss Crystal, because it feels to me like there was a loss of oxygen. So I don't know if it was a breathing trouble. To me, when I see breathing trouble, I really thought it was more of a cord around the, around the neck thing. It could definitely be a heart thing, but it just feels like it inter impeded on the breathing. Miss Lorna, if you see that there's two shows talking at the same time, you might have two different posts going at the same time. Yeah, Miss Crystal, I really wouldn't. I really wouldn't. But you know what? Look, like you're saying, you have four children. You still grieve the one that you don't have. That is a natural process. It's extremely natural process, and there's a lot of guilt with that. Um, even when you lose a child, people just say, well, get over it. You have four healthy children. That's not how it works, people. We don't just, you don't trade your kids out like a pair of shoes. You know, you trade the old ones out for a new pair. It doesn't work that way. You, children are an individual soul, and they carry a different part of us with them. You just don't trade one for the other. Miss Bridget, she says yes, and I don't even know the question. There's so many people talking to me at the same time. I would love for you to um, answer the question almost and the answer so I can keep up. <sighs> okay. Hi, Miss Cynthia. Hi, Constance. It's nice to see you back. Oh, okay. So, yes, Bridget. So, you were told that you have a tilted uterus. Yeah, it's something with your anatomy, sweetheart. It's like some people have had readings with me and, they, and I can see that they have polycystic ovarian syndrome where they have a hormone imbalance. I have one lady, in fact, with the incompetent cervix where they can do a cerclage to actually close the cervix up, but you need to get a doctor that's advanced in obstetrics and understands how to do those types of procedures. And you need to, you know, obviously you're, a high, you're high risk because you're paragravida like six or seven. 
um, and you're, you know, you're only birthing, well, right now you don't have any children, right? You just had those miscarriages. So you need to find a different, possibly a female doctor. I'm not saying anything about the males, but it feels to me you're going to have really good luck with a female doctor that's willing to do a cerclage and possibly even do an ultrasound on your uterus to figure out how they can help you to retain your pregnancies. Yeah, I believe so too. Miss Bridget, let me ask you a question. Bridget just said right. Um, are between like, are these miscarriages happen between 10 and 12 weeks, 10 and 13 weeks? They're, they're right around like the uh, two to three, like it feels like 10 to 12 weeks. And then there is like some spotting and bleeding and then you do the bed rest, but it doesn't work and it still becomes a spontaneous uh, miscarriage, correct? So this is when you were younger? And then she said yes. So it must have been answering the question. You offered Bridget to be a surrogate. I lost twins 28 years ago. Miss Jenny, I'm going to get to you in just a second. I just want you to know, Miss Bridget, that even though you weren't able to have those children conceived in this life, they're still around you and you will have the opportunity to get to know them. You know, people will say a lot of things, but I'm going to tell you the truth. God is a fair and just God who loves us and judges us by the intention of our heart, not always our actions, because hungry, desperate, tired, and abused people will do things that really aren't within God's realm of what the church, you know, church people would think was acceptable. But I want you to know that there is no thing that you suffer and struggle through that God will not make better for those that love him. And that's the most important thing I want you to know. So I do think that there probably wasn't the right people to help you. And I'm very sorry that you went through that. Hi, Miss. Yes, it, it, Crystal, it feels like breathing problems. It really, really does. Was he in distress during your labor? Was it, was it almost emergency or distress? Hi, Miss Peggy. Something just touched my back. Okay. I'm ho okay. All right. I guess that had to be something else because I don't like to be touched, so don't touch me. <laughs> Hi, Miss Lindsay. Okay, there are so many messages. Yeah, and it's not, I can't keep up. It's locking up and doing all kinds of stuff over here. I can't. Miss Eileen, I was seven months, had to go to San Diego Sharp Hospital. They called it zipper where, he, where his head didn't close up completely. Oh, no. Crystal said, yes, I had a miscarriage, so I technically should have six kids. I lost one at five weeks and one at 29 weeks. Um, it feels like the one that you lost at five weeks actually came back to you. Um, I feel like your son came back twice. I feel like your son that's on the other side, I feel like he came back twice. Miss Lorna, you're always so tired because your body's recovering at a, a cellular level and you're, you're still carrying positive, um, you're still carrying the positive, you're, you're still positive. You're, the virus is still active in some form. It's still trying to work its way through up to 40 something days. So, and also you, you feel still depleted. I don't feel like, I, I think that there was a side effect even from the medication that you were on, Miss Lorna, and that you really need to get your zinc and your vitamin C and even your vitamin D levels up. And just, just rest, just rest. All right, Miss Jenny. Yes, that tilted uterus, that keeps coming up and coming up. How old are you, Miss Bridget? I'm curious now. You got me wondering. Are you in your 50s? Boy. Miss Marlena, boy. Boy, boy, boy. Yes, Miss Jenny. God bless you. Yes, he will. <laughs> yes. Yes, Miss Crystal. You know, I've never gotten that right, Miss Lindsay. I'm going to be honest with you. Uh, my son is sitting in the studio. David, have I ever been able to predict my own pregnancies correctly? Nope. Never. <laughs> Bridget says she's 56. 
Yeah, that's what I figured. You're in her 50s. Um, well, bless your heart. Uh, yeah, no, I... Was, I was five months pregnant. Yeah, I never have been able to predict anybody on this side. <laughs> Ever. I got even my own, my own, I had six pregnancies, I have four children, and I never predicted a single one of them right. It was opposite every single time. True, David? What did you say? I said I predicted every, every one of my pregnancies the opposite. Yep. I predicted Eli. I predicted all of them. So. My son predicted all of them except himself, and I thought he was a girl, and I was going to name him Alexandra. <laughs> I predicted <laughs> So, I predicted every one of them. I could not predict... Anything like that, I simply, if your child was on the other side, I could connect to the spirit through my angels. So, no, I'm not a fortune teller. I'm not a card reader. I can't pick numbers. I wouldn't bet on my horse. I wouldn't bet on, I wouldn't take me to a horse race, if that's what you're asking. <laughs> Miss Lorna, that's not what you need to worry about. It's a side effect of the steroid type medication. It's okay, honey. Let the summer just be. You will be fine. Let, let. Don't worry about your weight. We're happy that you're alive. Hmm. Lindsay says I've had a few miscarriages. Could you tell me if they were boys or girls? Or any of them coming back on this one? It took over 24 hours to deliver him. They knew he passed beforehand. You know, that's what I'm saying. There was just so much distress with him. Um, did they induce you into labor? Because it feels like there was a lot of in in uh, not intercession, but like it, it's not it's not intercession. It's like intervention. There we go. It feels like there was a lot of intervention. Lorna, your hormones are changing, love. Hormones are changing. She says it's she gets well. She's looking for you. I love you. You can book one whenever you're ready. All right, Miss Jenny. Oh, I'm so glad that it made you heal. You know what? I had to do that too. I just really want to encourage you. If you've had a miscarriage, um, if you've had a stillborn, then you have already named your child and you have some way to grieve them. However, if you've had an abortion or a miscarriage, okay, so let's not use the word. Let's just say termination. If you had a termination at any point or a miscarriage, I really do encourage you that there is a syndrome that goes with this and it's a, it's a depress, it's a depressive mode. And the sad thing is there isn't a lot of places to express this. There isn't a lot of places to express the grief. A lot of young mothers won't even tell anybody they did it because not only are they ashamed they got pregnant and now they're even more uh, traumatized by the uh, termination. So they really don't have anybody to talk about it with. So a lot of them within a year will start using drugs and alcohol to escape and mask their inner pain. And again, that creates another set of scenarios to where, you know, you kind of become promiscuous or you don't even, it's almost like you're trying to get that back. And that happens a lot. But, um, I just, a lot of questions yeah, I just want to let you know that it's definitely a good idea. Okay, so I'm going to stop right there. It's definitely a good idea to give your child a name no matter what you want to name them and to have a discussion and prayer with them and tell them that you ask forgiveness and that you hope they understand and that you'd like to honor them. That's a very simple thing. Ask God to forgive you, forgive yourself, and honor them with the name and you will feel better. It feels like they weren't all together, Miss Lindsay. Like there was one very early, and then there was another one after one of your children. Yeah, about her curls. Yeah, she has. Yeah, she, when she came through in the reading, she showed me curly hair, brown eyes. Yeah, because it's like, did you have a miscarriage in an older son than a younger son? Because that's what it feels like. And it may, it feels like maybe the younger one might actually be that really. <laughs> oh, no, I only have 15% battery. I'm going to have to plug in. All right, give me, guys, give me just a second, you guys. Bear with me. This isn't, this isn't very uh, professional <laughs> filming. Give me just a minute. I got to get my phone plugged in here, and I can't get it. All right. There we go.
Now, how do I prop it up with it plugged in? That's, oh, it's not wanting to stay. Let me see if I can wedge you guys. I had a young male come through with an older male. One was 20 and one was 30, and they came through together, and Miss Jenny, I can't get this phone to stay. You A lot. Let me try putting it inside the candle and see if this will work. Nope. Let me try. How do I do this? I'm trying to wedge you guys up with a phone cord in the bottom, and I don't have a proper stand. Well, I'm leaning. <laughs> you the tilts? Yeah, I got the tilts. There's... Look, there's nothing I can do. It's plugged in right here. What am I supposed to do with that business? Oh, maybe in the handle? Mm -hmm. Okay, look at this, Mr. Sunshine Smart. Mr. <laughs> oh, think. Okay. Ms. Jenny, you had two people coming through for me. Yeah, they kept giving you medicine. It's almost like they were trying to stop the laboring or they were trying to induce laboring. There was a lot going on in that pregnancy. That was really traumatic. Hi, Miss Barbara. Hi, Veronica. <laughs> April Fool. I know, I thought my son was a girl and he was born April 13th and he was a boy. And I, remember, I was like, <laughs> I had some girl stuff picked out. I had to wait like another, what, like 12 years for a girl? What's your age? No, 11 years. Yes, I feel like your younger one, Miss Marlena. It really does help to acknowledge it because what you, you cannot heal what you do not reveal. So if shame or guilt holds you back, that is not through the power of the Holy Spirit and that is not with God. So please be with God and forgive, ask forgiveness, forgive yourself. Honor that spirit regardless, even if you don't know what it was. No, it's okay. Yeah, I miscarried um, with my pregnancy right before my son Eli, and I know it was the same spirit. He came back a second time. I was on heart medicine that caused me to miscarry, and when I got pregnant with him, I went off the medicine against doctor's orders. And I went the whole nine months without a single heart problem, without anything, because God wanted to deliver him. And when he was born, his name is Elijah, which means gift from God in Hebrew. Yeah, it's very distraught. I'm so sorry. Yeah, some churches still have them. <laughs> Yeah, that's what I was just going to say, Lindsay. It feels like they were broken up in between. Do you, you have a parent that's passed, Miss Lorna? <laughs> yeah. Okay. Miss Jenny. The other day, you asked me to come through, and I gave you a message from your nephew. His name was Marcos, I believe. Marcos said that... i got to get that light out of my eyes just a little bit. Marcos said that he took responsibility for his passing, and you really weren't ready to hear that. Well, Crystal, you're surrounded by spirit, though, and you do feel them, but in your grief, it's difficult, but you've had all kinds of spiritual activity around you, tons of it, and your kids feel it, too. Yeah, that's what I thought, Miss Crystal. They were trying to induce. Yeah, we can definitely start a support group. I think it's a wonderful thing. The sun and the moon, that's wonderful. Yeah, that's what I mean, Miss Lindsay. It just feels like there was so much intervention. Like, it was, we're going to stop you. We're going to induce you. We're going to drill this into you, that into you. I just feel like, uh, I don't feel like that's what caused them to pass, but I feel like uh, it just created way more distress than necessary. But it does feel like, they said it was something with his heart. I feel like he was born blue, and it's almost as if it could have been a pinched cord or some sort. It, it, well, it feels like a prolapse of the cord, as if the cord was kinked in half, and there wasn't 
a proper flow, something to do with the oxygen. So it could be the heart, could be that, but it definitely feels like it was something to do with the oxygen. You're welcome, Miss Marlena. Yes, Miss Melissa, of course. Oh, well, hello, Miss Bridget. I'm so glad Miss Teresa's here. <laughs> what do you think, Miss Constance? So, Miss Jenny, you had a you had a nephew that committed. Uh, I told you that he took responsibility for his own passing, and and yeah, I know you didn't want to hear this, but you know, he needed to tell you that there was definitely some other stuff involved. I feel like there was drugs or alcohol, and he doesn't. He talks about not being in his right mind, and it had to do something with his children, something with an, a woman. There was either I think this might be an ex. But there was a lot of situations to it, and um, you had another male on the other side too, and one was in the 20s and one was like in the 30s or late 30s when they passed, and the other one was like your first love, and it's someone you never let go of, and he's been on the other side trying to make contact with you. And uh, Miss Jenny, the message that Marcos had wasn't just for you because you're very sensitive to spirit. So you've had a lot of spirit around you and you've been sensing them and you've been feeling them. But there's something to do with your property as well, your house. Okay. So the man that claims he's like your first love, he has he's associated with the rose. So it feels like either he gave you roses or there's something to do with the tattoo, but he's showing me the rose. And so he's definitely associated with that. Okay. You need to stay right there. Please, Miss Renee, there's a reason you're on here tonight. I'm going to tell you what it is in just a minute. No. Yes, his ex. Um, this has to do with Marco. It talks a lot about that. Um... He's talking about your first love, though. Even though you, it seems like there was other relationships, this one you never really got over. Sunny, I feel like I need to do a reading with her. I can't pick up on anyone else's energy right this second. I need to give, finish giving this reading. Are you in recovery, Miss Jenny? Because it makes me feel like between the time that you're, but, that, but uh, okay, that light's still a little too much. Between the time that um, you and him dated, there's been a lot of stuff that's happened and there was like two other relationships that he's showing me and he actually had another relationship. But when he passed, um, So he wasn't taking care of himself at all, and it feels like he might have been drinking and had a blood sugar uh, a blood sugar issue. So it just feels like he wasn't taking care of himself at all. You're welcome, Miss Marlena. When you say yes, Miss Jenny, could you answer what exactly it is? Okay. Miss Jennifer, we need to do a private reading, please, ma'am. Yes, it was. She was there, absolutely. There, there were, there's not much difference between this dimension and the other ones, except they're higher vibrational. Yes, you got surgery. But I'm talking about the man that passed. There's two on the other side. Your nephew is only one. He came through very strong in the other reading, and then you went off the air, and I couldn't connect to him anymore. However, you're also, this is like a high school, very young, like 17 years old, young, 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 but there was such a love between you and him, and he still visits you, and he's talking about passing from a blood sugar issue, 
and he was drink he was also a drinker so that didn't really help the situation so i believe this is like diabetes and alcoholism i, I just don't want to label a lot of things but um you've had a lot of spirit around you and you have a lot of people that are past and you've been having spirit activity even in your house but there's a very heavy energy and you've been waking up like between three and four o'clock in the morning not able to sleep and having lots of panic and anxiety Hi, Miss Gloria. God bless you, Miss Misty, Miss Dandia, Miss Amanda. I just want to let you know that your family is still around you. Your family is still around you. So know that the love is still there. And whenever you have somebody that's even from your past and you want to share that love with them, you can go ahead and do that. You just have to think about their spirit. Focus on it and ask God to allow them to know how much you love them. And if you need help, you can always ask God's holy angels to be there with you at any time. Yes, he did now. He had diabetes. Yes, he did. And um, there's just been a lot of codependency in your life cycle. And there's things that you're still trying to work out. So I believe you're, you're in recovery right now. And I want you to continue that recovery and not backslide back toward any of this. You know, God's trying to change your life. He wants to see you become a victory. He wants to see you overcoming this. And I do cleansing on homes, and I do it in the most Christ-like way, where we use actual sage, we use Palo Santos, but we can also use holy water and bless the doorpost, and I'll guide you through that process, and we'll pray over your home. So if you have some energy to get rid of, we can do that remotely. And I, I do them as well as my manager. She also does them, and she's terrific. <laughs> Hi, Ms. Amanda. You know what, Miss Melissa, I just want to mention to you guys, I'm going to be holding the Empath 911 next Sunday. It's so important. There's so many people activating into their gifts, and they don't know why this spiritual activity is happening, anxiety, panic, hypervigilance. Um, they're feeling things they've never felt. They're picking up symptoms from clients. They're feeling the, neg excuse me, the bubble of negativity around people they're trapped with in quarantine. The Empath 911 is going to give you the ability to help shield, ground, prayers for helping you, understanding your spiritual gifts, and um, it's going to be held next. It'll be on my events calendar on both the Psychic Medium, Sunshine Frost, and my personal page, but it is next Sunday at 5.30, so we'll send you an email. Yes, ma'am, Miss Jennifer. Your case is a bit complicated, and I feel like we need to talk about that um, there's a lot to it. I couldn't cover it all in this one reading. And if I open the can of worms, there's no way I'm going to get them all out. And you're going to leave feeling more frustrated and confused than you are right now. I would much rather do a private reading with you, Miss Jennifer. I don't want to air your, uh, your, 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 I think it's your daughter, I believe. I don't want to air that out online, okay? Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Miss Jody. Thank you so much. There was a lady that is here. I just wish she was here so much. Her daughter came to me. I thought it was a son. She said her name was Vic, and I thought it was a boy, but it was actually a lady. Dominique, okay, wait a second. I'm going to go back. There was a lady that lost her son right after the Paradise Fire, and I said, I have a message for you. Why? Here we go. Miss Renee, my son would have been 34 in May. He passed on December 28th. 2018, just a month after the campfire in Paradise, California. Hmm. That's where that's where she passed, isn't it? Yep. Okay. Wow. Um, where he'd been working as the outpatient coordinator at Feather River Hospital. He was such a boy, beautiful soul. The thought that he may be in hell is just killing me. Miss Renee, can I talk about your son, please? I want to share some of your some of your messages with you. Could you tell me his name? I have so many people trying to come through right now. That's why I have this fan on me. <sighs> Miss Peggy, are you still here? I'm going to wait for Miss Renee to answer. Miss Peggy, are you still here? Because your mom's been coming to you quite a lot. You're welcome, Miss Jennifer. God bless you. <laughs> yes, I Miss Annette David, she said she appreciates the session on feeling cold 
And now energy is like light waves and electromagnetic particles. And as they are moving from the higher dimension to the lower, they can create a cold chill because of what? The downward pressure, right, David? It, cold, it creates a cold chill. I'm sorry, I said that one more time. So anyway, they create the cold chill when they're moving from the higher pressure to the lower, I guess. It creates a pressure system. It feels cold. It's not that they're increase making it. Increase in velocity, decrease in pressure, decrease in temperature. Increase in velocity, decrease in pressure, and that's how it happens. Decrease in temperature. Decrease in temperature. I felt a very cold feeling over, over, over by my body to where I couldn't get warm after seeing someone. Yes, that's normal, but they're not trying to do that. Yes, Miss Lynette, and you kind of knew that, and uh, it wasn't an expected passing, and there was, there was things that you didn't even get to say to him that you wish you would have, and it feels like, it feels like actually there's some unspoken words. I think we could do that in a reading and get to actually allow you to hear that, and you know what? I want to tell you that I am recently doing, Josh, mm. I'm doing a reading that's coming up this month. It's called a, um, essentially you get the reading and you get to choose someone else to be in your reading for $50. $50. So like, let's say that we're doing a reading with you, Miss Lynette, and you decide to have a family member of his join your reading. We will start on video messenger and then you can choose who you want to add and it's $50 per person. And, and after we do your reading, I am going to answer at least one to two questions from the other person so they receive a mini reading as well. So instead of recording it and replaying it for them, it's an opportunity for you both to receive messages for your loved ones. And I think it's so healing. I got to do one today for a woman whose son had passed and I'm trying to think who it was. It was Miss Pat and her son had passed and it was amazing that his birthday was coming up. He talked about his birthday and how he wanted to grill out, how he wanted the chocolate cake down the details of everything he wanted for his birthday and he even told her that mom i know you can't have sugar so make it with splenda <laughs> it was quite special and he talked about his little brother who was the one that found him when he passed and how hard that had been on him so she's decided to do a reading with her other son so he can hear those messages directly from his brother How did John Josh pass? I'm sorry to say. Because it didn't feel like he passed in the fire. 28. How old was he when he passed also? <laughs> Miss Donna, you're just the most amazing woman in the world. I love you so much. And I can't say enough good things about this woman. Miss Donna has dealt with a multitude of health problems and she's dealing with cancer and she's had to have surgery after surgery after surgery. Right now she has not found her soulmate. She doesn't have children that are around her and she has basically no family but her church family and yet every time she texts me, she asks what she can do for me. What she can do for me. If that doesn't humble me and wake me up to the type of person I want to be, then no one ever will. I feel extremely inspired by your story, Miss Donna, and honored every day to call you my friend. I'm very proud of you for the way that you embrace life in such an inspiring way, and you are surrounded by so many angels, and you're such a godly woman. I feel your spirit every time I see even the photograph of your face. So please know that there are so many people around you, I couldn't possibly tell them all. <laughs> Thank you so much, Miss Dominique. It will be amazing, and that's why I'm offering this. I don't like to see people suffer, and I believe families need to have healing together. And it's much easier for them to accept the message directly from my mouth than it would be you telling them secondhand. So I wanted to offer you that reading. Yeah, your partner does have bad energy, Miss Jenny, and, and it's very heavy, and I feel like there's more drinking and definitely some heavy energy around there. So, And there's also some old belongings that need to be removed. But we can talk about that in a cleansing. We can do a house cleaning. All right, you're welcome, Miss Lynette. Thank you so much. Love you, too. That's what I thought. Okay. 
Okay, that's so strong. Okay, so I'm. David, don't do that. Okay. Miss Renee, something happened to him at 28. He's showing me the number 28. Was this, because, he, okay, first of all, he did not go to hell. So please, I wish you'd watch the broadcast I just did last night on suicides. That is not, that is not accurate. There, there is a, there, it is a hell for them. But it is not hell in the technical term of a lake of fire and brimstone that God prepared, not for human souls, but for those fallen angels that denied Christ, rebelled against God, and fell to earth, and are now being restrained at the head of the rivers Euphrates. What the biblical description of hell is and what they go through is not the same. When Jesus passed, uh, it took three days from the time that he, he was crucified before he rose again from the grave. During that time, it said his spirit went down to prison and visited those souls and ministered to them. In the ancient Hebrew and Greek, prison was not what we're thinking of today where they're unlocked in bars. Prison is really merely a lower level of heaven where people are trying to, to kind of ascend their souls, but they need healing, and there is a process of cocooning on the other side with their angels who have been with them since conce conception, and those angels are with them al along with their guides, and they help to cocoon them and help them to re watch their life and allow them to relive their life from another perspective, like seeing their life from God's perspective, seeing all the good that they've done in life. It's very easy for God to get, I'm sorry, it's not, it's very easy for Satan himself to get people distracted. And in this young man's situation, okay, I'm missing the answer. I'm sorry, I'm reading through this. It's really important that I do Miss Renee's uh, message from her, her beautiful son, Josh. So there's something that happened with Josh at 28, and there's also showing me, does he have a child? Because they're showing me a woman, he's showing me a woman, I don't know if this is an ex, an ex-wife or an ex, and I feel like there was drinking involved in that as well, and I'm really sorry that you were informed that he went to hell, that is your worst fear, but no, it's it's not like that. Um, they don't they don't go kind of like in general general population when they cross over. There's a deep cocooning and healing process when they get to see their life from the sort of the God perspective or the third party perspective, so that they can see like how you saw him. You know all the love you had for him and the unconditional love that you had for him, and how he really was as a person. It, it was quite beautiful how he would be so willing to help other people. When is his birthday? Because he's making me feel like it's not past yet. Miss Renee, are you still there? I'm just waiting for a moment on Miss Renee. I'm going to get some water. I got it. Yes, I did, but something happened at 28 that perpetuated that situation, and it wasn't like that. I'm trying to get Miss Renee to help confirm some of the stuff that we're saying. Yeah, I'm behind you. I, I'm trying to catch up. Miss Amy, I know you're, you're close uh, family or friends with Miss Renee. Can you confirm any of these things for me, please? Oh, goodness. As soon as I bring Amy in, here comes the crew. That's our sweet boy. I can, I can. <laughs> oh. <laughs> I'm not laughing at that. They come through no matter what you want them to do. And they, they come through and. 
You know, they have their personalities with them on the other side. There is no crying, and it's, it's completely different. Completely different. Yeah, it's his birthday's coming up. That's what I thought. I'm like, his birthday's just about to come. Yeah, next week. Next week. Yeah, my son's is May 5th. I knew it was coming up. You know, this is, this is crazy um, because the, the lady I gave the reading to, her son had a birthday. His birthday was May 9th today, and they always come in clusters. And I was going to say, I was saying, uh, Miss Amy, your crew's trying to come through again. <laughs> it's like, here comes the boys of summer. Uh, let's see. Yeah, May 7th. You know, the thing is, He was really close to you, extremely close to you, and you were very, very close to him. But it feels like there was a female or something that kind of, I don't know if this is a daughter-in-law. I almost feel like, it just feels like there was definitely another person that was blocking your relationship because it had been really close, and then it was kind of off again, and then it was kind of on again. Yeah. Yeah, he wasn't in his right mind, but it feels like, was he on a medicine? Was he on a medication? Because something was not right about his right mind whatsoever. And I, that, that's also a thing I want to I address right now. You know, 13% of people are going around with undiagnosed biological and chemical imbalance issues. How could a fair and just and honest loving creator punish us in hell when we're already at our worst? I just want to disprove that right now. I want to throw that out the window. I am a Christian. I'm a church-going Christian. But I absolutely will never stand to hear that somebody that's at the wit's end that is completely oppressed and decides to terminate their, their mortal coil, so to speak, and now we're going to automatically assume that they're in hell. That's absolutely not true. I've done readings for everything. How many, how many victims have I had that have been suicides, honey? No, probably a dozen. Yeah, maybe more than that. Yeah. And drug overdoses... Uh, yes, yeah, suicides, drug overdoses, murders, it, I mean, they all, that's, it's just not true. It's not true to divide them up because A, number one is, how do you know that they didn't ask forgiveness and connect to their Savior before they did it? Murder is not an unforgivable sin. It really isn't. And the only unforgivable sin is listed in the Bible that is, that is correctly translated, mostly, is that denial of the Holy Spirit. Okay, so you don't want to deny the Holy Spirit access to speak through you in witness of God. Exactly, that's what I'm saying. Now, Renee, there's something to do, like I said, with the medication. There's something to do with that because he was, did he have a relationship? Because to me, it feels like 28. Amen. God does give us grace till our last breath. And I just want you to know that it is not your place nor anyone else's to judge anyone how their life ended or who they are on the other side or who they're with. So let's just please stop that. You know, that has done more to harm Christianity than any other thing is the lack of compassion and understanding when dealing with those that have crossed over in a questionable manner. So please don't be one of those people that thump the Bible at someone when they're really hurting and uh, do more harm than good. Reach out in love and compassion because when my Savior came, he didn't condemn a single soul. No one. No one except for the religious scholars of his time, the Pharisees, the Sadducees, and the Sanhedrin. There's no judgment. You don't need to judge anyone else's walk. If you find that you are so perfect and, and so completely all right with God that you need to judge how someone else is doing things, then I, I, really, uh, I really hope you can walk on water because I only know one perfect person and he's not here right now. <laughs> He's not on this earth, so let's not judge anybody else. But there was definitely, Miss um, Lorna, that medicine is going to make you feel that way. I don't think it's Alzheimer's. I think you're recovering from the hy uh, hydroxychloroquine. It's extremely strong, and it's going to take your cells a while to regenerate. Give yourself three or four months, and don't worry about if you're losing memory or sleep or any of that. Just let your body heal, okay? No judgment. That's correct. Love is the highest vibration, and love transcends all dimensions. So if we're talking up to five dimensions, heaven is not in the clouds, you guys. It's right above us in a higher perfected state, and that's why they can visit us, but they're not going to come. It's very difficult for your loved ones to come in a form that is recognizable, so they often do it in energetic bursts, or like orbs, or you might feel them in different ways. <laughs> Yes, 
Yeah, that's what I, w I wasn't going to say that. I kind of knew that already when that's when we first started talking about this and you gave me the name Josh. That's why I kind of grabbed my chest because I realized how sudden and drastic it was. He made sure that there was no way to undo what had been done and he felt that he was doing the right thing at that time. You know, he wants to talk about how sorry he is for how he was found and the and and uh, how terrible that was for you. I feel like did his brother find him? Cuz this has done so much damage to your family and to you and he does take responsibility for his passing. But as I've said, he was not in his right mind. And there was conversations he had that let you know that he was not in his right mind. Definitely not in his right mind. And when someone passes, either from drug overdose or suicide, you know, there is, like I say, there's a cocooning period. And it's almost like what they call spirit. It's not spirit prison. It's essentially a lower dimension of a heavenly. So if you read your Bible correctly, there's actually three levels of heaven. The telestial, ter terrestrial, telestial, and celestial, and each have a glory one above the other. So the sun, the moon, and the stars. When we're talking about this, we're talking about being in a lower kingdom of paradise, but it can't really be paradise for a soul that has crossed over in that manner until they fully understand the love of God and are able to understand what they did. And so that means that it takes their mind a while to heal and to repair itself and there's a reason why you weren't able to feel his spirit right away because he was on the other side cocooning quite a lot and being healed and he had people with him on the other side they're showing me a grandfather let me go back i'm trying to think okay his brother's been quite messed up and damaged because of this You know, he doesn't even really like, he was kind of private, but he was a mama's boy. Very, very sweet, loved to cook, loved to eat, loved music, was a very, very good friend. Um, he was very, very loving, but not really to himself. He was extremely hard on himself, and he went through a lot of self-struggle. <clears throat> Miss Tanya, you're an angel of God, and I'm so happy. You're a nurse and just a wonderful person, and I, I just love you, and I send so much love to you, Miss Tanya. You're one of my heroes. <laughs> God bless. Yes, God bless. Yeah. It feels like it's just a lot about that. It's really quite horrific. No, he wasn't in his right mind, and it, and it, it uh, yeah, there's a lot of love, there's a lot of love that you've sent him, but there's a lot of healing that needs to come, I would love to be able to do a private reading with you when you feel ready to, uh, to take this on, and, and I want you to know, even though all this time has passed, exactly, that's what I mean about his brother, this is done, it's really messed him up, big time. But, you know, and the sad thing is, he didn't mean to do that, you know? Okay, so, for instance, I had a lady, Stephanie Ann, I believe she's watching. Stephanie's parents came through. It was, I believe, her, her, uh, her, I said mother and stepfather? Stepmother, step, or real father? Anyway, mom and dad. Mom and stepdad, mom and boyfriend. I think it was her mother and her mother's boyfriend. And they were drinking and driving, and they had such a, such a terrible wreck. They didn't even kill anybody else. They killed only themselves. And they came through during a reading, a few maybe a month or two ago, and they said that they, the mother actually was, her, she was so forcefully driven from her body that her soul was actually thrown out of the car, and she had to be suddenly sober and completely crossed over. And the other one was crushed. One was stuck behind the steering wheel. So in their passing, of course, there was no pain because they were drinking and it was a very sudden death. But when they were thrown from their body and they're standing there with their angels and guides, they had to turn back and actually acknowledge what they did. What they did. So 
there's a lot of that that happens with someone when they commit suicide if they're not in their right mind or there's alcohol and drugs involved. So just know that that wasn't his intention, but once he did that, it, it's, it's been difficult. He had to heal from that too. Yes, an artist, musician, songwriter, cook, he and I were very close. That's what he's telling me. Extremely close to you. He was a mama's boy. You didn't like anybody to get on his case. You could, but you wasn't letting anybody else get on it. And he loved to cook. He had a beautiful voice. He, he was very loving. And he had, you know, he could be very gruff on the outside, but he had such a big loving heart. So he just wants you to know that he's still with you, mama. It feels like you have something to do with Christmas, too. Like he used to really love Christmas. And his birthday's coming up, and that's really difficult. But you know what? It's funny because I just, and not funny for you, but funny that I just gave a reading similar to this today. And I told the mother, her son's birthday is May 9th, and I said he wants you to have a barbecue and make a chocolate cake and celebrate his memory with his brother, who that's the one that found him. And um, I believe that this is what he would want the same way instead of this being in such sorrow and your fear that he's in hell. He's not in hell. Definitely not in hell. Josh really was a creative genius. He's showing me, but his stuff actually got a little darker as his mindset got a little darker. So um, you could just see that it was kind of a spiral. But please, you know, mental illness is not a curse, and it does happen. You guys, I'm so glad I got to give these messages. I'm beginning to feel my battery draining down, so I think it's time to call it a night. Thank you so much for joining me on the Angel Hour tonight. And if you know someone that's suffered through any of these things, I want to tell you that God is with you. He is everywhere. Love is all there ever is. Please encourage one another and let's stay in the one tribe of the Christ consciousness in love and peace. God bless you all. And I will see you on Sunday. I'm doing a one tribe dr family drum circle on Facebook Live. My kids and I will be playing music drumming if you can make a shaker a shaker bottle if you can make you can even put rice beans in a toilet paper roll or paper towel roll and have your kids shaking it but we're going to be drumming together at 10 30 a.m any instrument you like if you play the flute the clarinet i don't care i can't hear you on the other side i'm going to be playing with my tribe and i want you to play with your tribe and i want to continue to raise the vibration of light and love and i will see you guys so sunday at 10 30 on Facebook Live, and I'll also see you again for live readings called The Angel Hour at Monday, 7.30. And if you'd like to book an appointment, I would love to help you. I do work seven days a week for a limited amount of time, and I'm doing free consultations of five minutes on video chat. So if you believe you'd like to have a reading and you'd like to uh, do a, five, a free consult for five minutes, just let me know on Psychic Medium Sunshine Frost or send me an instant message. God bless you guys and have a wonderful night. Bye-bye.